Hello everybody and welcome to Parks Bros. It's Drew here and I went to Not Scary Farm's 50th anniversary celebration last night. I want to talk about it. That's right, I was able to visit Knott's Scary Farm and their, of course, illustrious and oldest running haunt in the world. I mean, 50 years is pretty insane for any event at a theme park, let alone for the first haunt event at a theme park. And I gotta say, even for going on a Friday night, I was very successful in doing most of everything that I wanted to do and almost everything that would have been available outside of missing some of the shows. Now, before we get into anything, I didn't really film much at the park itself. I was with a group of 14, so I didn't want to be a hindrance on their experience with the event, doing a full vlog or anything like that. And it let me take in a lot more than I typically do when I'm filming. So I'm sorry, there's going to be a couple of clips just kind of replaying over what I'm talking about over and over again. So I hope you don't mind, but let's just talk through my night. So we got to the park right around 7 p.m. and the security was pretty full. Of course, the whole party wasn't there directly on time and that's all right. So we waited another 30, 45 minutes before actually getting into the park itself. So about 7.45, we ended up heading through security. This was when we saw our first instance of the chaperone policy being enforced literally the second we got into the line for security check and they were doing a stellar job at pointing out people and being like hey if you don't have a chaperone with you and you're under the age of it's either 15 or 16 i'm not entirely sure you're going to be asked to not go into the park itself now obviously if you have a chaperone that rule is okay as long as the chaperone stays with you the entire night but that is something of note and it actually made quite the difference inside the park there's also a pretty strict bag policy that we didn't have any issues with. Thankfully, everybody in our party was notified by myself a couple days early, so they knew not to bring a big bag or even a medium-sized bag without it being completely clear. And they do sell bags in Virginia's, I believe, that fit their criteria. Then we headed into the park itself and could see some absolutely incredible decorations that they have specifically for this year, including a lot of odes to years past with old tickets and plenty of other really cool Easter eggs, and that was kind of the theme throughout the entire event. There were Easter eggs to old mazes, old scare zones, all over. Now, since we got into the park a little later than open and a little later than we would have liked, we ended up not going through a maze first. We walked through the center of Ghost Town, which a lot of the people in my group were pretty terrified at the thought of, before actually checking out Music Monsters and Mayhem, a brand new show for this year, kind of celebrating all the 50 years in the past, with tribute acts to all of the old hosts of the event, as well as plenty of dance and singing numbers that were all really phenomenal. Now, you might have seen this show get some flack on social media lately. Don't believe it. It is really well put together. And to be honest, they probably put too much money into the show itself, considering how many people were in the crowd, at least for that first showing of the night. I know it's early in the season. Hopefully, they can flesh out more crowds later on because the show deserves it. It's absolutely phenomenal. One of the best pieces of Knott's Entertainment I've seen in quite a while. The only other show I think that compares to it is something like Home for the Holidays that they play during Merry Farm out on the Calico stage. The sets are ever evolving. The, the host of the show is absolutely phenomenal at changing into every prior host in the best he can. And the jokes were absolutely hanging level. And if you don't know what I mean by that, the Hanging was a show at Not Scary Farm for quite a long time. It ended up being retired in around 2019, but it's back this year. We sadly did not get the chance to check it out later on in the night, but I think some of these jokes and some of the play with the crowd made up for that. The performers are stellar, the dance acts are incredible, and especially got a shout out to the one tap dancer in the show. Just amazing work. The lighting, so great. The sets, incredible. I, I Like, I could talk about this show for a long time. There's a really great surprise at the very end. And I will mention, this show 
is for mature audiences. It says that at the door. It says that in the audio cue before the show starts. The host literally was saying, what are you doing here to a 12-year-old that was in the crowd and making fun of the parent for letting him go in. But of course, if you are a mature audience and want some good laughs as well as some great dancing, it's a really cool show to check out. And it gives a lot of odes to Elvira, who took over that stage for many decades, as well as some of the previous hosts that you might not know about. Following that, which, by the way, the show's about 45 minutes long, so it does take a good chunk of your night out. But it's okay, because this Friday in particular was not too busy. It was the second Friday of the year, I will mention that. But we headed to our first maze. And now we walked all the way back through Ghost Town Streets, which I was okay with, but I know a couple people in my party were kind of terrified but it's all part of the experience but our first maze of the night was bloodline which was a new maze last year which featured blasters now this year the blasters are gone so they were able to really scare this year and i thought the scares in the maze were a lot more well-rounded although i will say a lot of the effects that were a thing last year sadly have not made their way to this year and um, it seemed like there were a fewer scare actors in the maze itself. Now, I will say some of those scares kind of helped make up for that a bit, but I'd say it was probably on par with last year, even though I wasn't the biggest fan of blasters in that maze. If not, maybe a step down. Following that, the party was like, hey, Dark Entities is right here. Let's go through that. And it is going to be in its last year this year. So why not go through it one more time? This maze to me has always felt pretty understaffed, although the sets are pretty incredible and very tight, which I think kind of adds to that scary space factor. But I literally could count on one hand how many scare actors were around this maze. And I will say two that tried to scare us stood still and said, uh which to me didn't seem to make the cut. I will say Dark Entities was probably my least favorite run of the night, but following that, we went through Depths, another retiring maze this year. This was a favorite of mine when it first opened. And again, not too many scare actors in this maze, at least up front. But later on, they definitely packed in a lot more. Some of the effects weren't working, but there was a ton of fog in one of the finale scenes. If you know what I'm talking about, you know. And a lot of people in my party really enjoyed this maze a lot. They said it was one of their favorites of the night. And I gotta say, the run-through was pretty good. Just wish there were a couple more scare actors early on. So from here, we ended up skipping Waxworks and heading towards Camp Snoopy or the Gauntlet as it now has its new scare zone for this year. And I gotta say, Gauntlet doesn't seem to be too different from the Hollows in the past. Sure, their costumes are a bit different, but the feeling is pretty similar. The only real differences you see are around the area itself. There's none of those pumpkin wooden spires anymore. There are banners featuring dragons because it is kind of a medieval theme. Now I will say Gauntlet as a scare zone, just it being in that area of Camp Snoopy is always gonna look cool, but I will say maybe they should try in the future to get that theme across more. Regardless, some of the best, and I mean absolute best scare actors were in this zone. One of them was literally hiding in a bush and we couldn't even see him until he jumped out with his tambourine. It was phenomenal the way they were using this area to their benefit and really getting the best scares possible. I will say out of all the scare zones, we had some of the best interactions in the gauntlet. So huge shout out to all of them. I just would like to see maybe some more theming to put across that medieval idea that they're going for. Now in Camp Snoopy, taking up the place of Pumpkin Eater of years past, there was the Chilling Chambers. It's kind of the tribute maze for this year, showing off the last 50 years of mazes with old artifacts being taken from the mazes throughout the years and putting them in to one place. And it's a, it's a cool idea, I think, but I think you need the context. If I hadn't told the people in my party the context, they were pretty confused. I only got to tell a couple of them before going in, and the people that knew were like, oh, that's really cool, I like that. The people who didn't were pretty confused because you do jump pretty quickly from scene to scene, and you go from an asylum to what seems to be a dentist office, kind of a ode to Tooth Fairy there, I think, as well as going into a nightclub, and then to a circus, and then to so many other different types of themes. I don't want to spoil too much, but 
you can definitely, if you've been going to the event for a long time, you will see some references to mazes you've done in the past. And I gotta say, this was staffed to the brim. Some of the scares were some of the best we got all night. I mean, I'll never forget one of my buddies behind us getting the only scare by this scare actor, but it was so good. He screamed louder than I think we'll ever hear him scream ever again. It was phenomenal. Really enjoyed this maze. I think it's awesome. We'll see if it comes back next year because it is a tribute maze specifically for the 50th. So I would like to see it come back next year potentially, but we'll see what they do. Following that, we went into Fiesta Village. A lot of my friends enjoyed the new version of Fiesta Village because many of them don't visit Knott's that often, and some of them rode Wave Swinger. And then we ended up getting to a couple rides because at this point, we had been making pretty good progress. We got to spin on the swings as well as hat dance, which I thought was kind of fun, just hanging around, doing typical Knott's things in the middle of Scary Farm, because at this point, I think it was around 10 p.m. or so, and the crowds actually seemed to be thinning out, or at least beginning to. And the fact that we had done four mazes in just under an hour, or maybe just over an hour, I forget which, it was a pretty astonishing accomplishment to me. Because you hear all these horror stories about haunts being overcrowded, and there's three-hour waits, but... At Scary Farm, at least for the Friday we went, it was pretty easy. I think the longest we waited for any maze was 20 minutes or so. Following getting some rides in Fiesta Village, we headed to the boardwalk. But not completely into the boardwalk because we hit up Cinema Slasher. This is a brand new maze for this year, and I gotta say, after first hearing the announcement of it, I wasn't too excited. I'm not a big fan of just gore and slasher as an idea for a maze. But man, the sets, the idea behind it, you're stepping into the movie screen and it just keeps going wrong. I loved the way they put this maze together. This was my winner of all the mazes we were able to check out. It was phenomenal. Staffed to the brim, except towards the end of the maze. We ended up being in the middle of a cast change right as we got towards the ending scenes. So some of the finale scenes were not as fleshed out as they should have been, but the rest of the maze really made up for that. There was one moment where one of the scare actors stopped in front of a couple of girls in front of us, and they didn't want to move. They ended up sneaking by him. The moment they did, they sprinted, and he chased after them. It was an amazing experience just in the one room alone. It was one of the best interactions we had all night, and um, that was pretty much the vibe of the whole maze. It was really, really well done. I will say this one kind of bottled necked a little bit there was a lot of stopping and going and just one like caterpillar like line but it was fantastic overall following that we went through mesmer which i gotta say mesmer had a great run for us it was my second favorite of the night i really love mesmer as an idea too i like the mind games that it plays on you and makes you like question your existence and all that type of stuff i like that type of scare more than gore i will say for sure and this one was staffed better than even last year so there was a lot of extra scares that i wasn't expecting i will say some of the scares might have been switched out for their different set times but man, oh man, there were some that I was not expecting, and it was a great time overall. Mesmer was fantastic this year. Gotta say, if I had to rank, Cinema Slasher would be one, Mesmer two, and then beyond that, it kind of gets into Chambers three, and then the rest are kind of all over the place. Although, I will say, Chambers may maybe bump into two. It's, it's kind of tough for me to say. Following that, everyone was satisfied with the amount of mazes we had gone through, and at this point, I believe it was around midnight or so. We ended up riding Coast Rider, which I was not expecting to do whatsoever, but we did it. It was fun. And following that, we saw that hang time's wait wasn't too long, and everyone who hadn't been on the ride, which there was plenty in my group, were really itching to go. So we ended up riding hang time, and after we got off hang time, they all wanted to ride Ghost Rider, so we walked through all of the scare zones yet again, and then ended our night with a 3 a.m. Ghost Rider Scary Farm ride, which, man, I forget how good that ride is in that, ex oh, mm, I can't even put it into words. It is insane what a difference riding it in that scenario is compared to like a February Tuesday at 10 in the morning. It truly feels unstoppable. But with that, we were pretty much the last people to leave the park. We ended up leaving the parking lot around three in the morning, but I gotta say it was totally worth it. Such an amazing event. Is Scary Farm worth it this year? 100%, at least for it being the busy level that it was. I understand it's gonna get more and more busy, but if your group is more focused on hitting out all of the mazes, you should be able to do that even on a busier night. 
Sure, you might not be able to do too much more. I mean, I was literally telling the group beforehand that it's going to be busy enough where we're not going to ride any rides. If you want to ride rides, come back with me a different day and I'll get you on all of them. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll plan out a route for us to hit every ride throughout the day. But we were able to do both um, because the crowds weren't as bad as I was expecting. And maybe that has to do with the chaperone policy, which I'm sure that definitely helps. But it was really a great time. Everybody enjoyed themselves. Now, I will say most people agreed that Horror Nights, at least Maze scare-wise, might be scarier overall, but they enjoyed the vibe of everything at Scary Farm more. They enjoyed the entertainment more, the scare zones, the interactions they had in the scare zones, as well as just the constant being surrounded by theming. They really ended up liking this more than Horror Nights overall, I think. It was absolutely amazing. I'm very excited that I was able to get to the 50th anniversary. And I gotta say, it's totally worth your time. I will say Saturdays are probably gonna be a little harder to get everything done, but if you're going on a Thursday, Wednesday even, Friday or Sunday, you should be able to knock out most things and have a great time while doing it. So if you've been to Scary Farm this year, let me know what do you guys think of the event this year overall. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And we'll see if I make it back this year. Probably not. But I definitely wouldn't mind it, so we'll just have to wait and see. But thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it, and thank you all so much for 15,000 subscribers. We hit that while I was asleep after getting home at about 4 a.m. But again, thank you all so much for that amazing milestone. To celebrate, we have brand new t-shirts. They'll be down below, below the description, actually, I believe, because it's got a link into YouTube itself, which I think is kind of cool. But with that all said, thank you all again so much, seriously. And until next time, we'll see you on the next ride.